Hey, it's Ben here, and here in this tutorial we're going to have a look at three ways in which we can add contrast to our videos in Final Cut Pro. Now this is going to take you through a quick way of adding a contrast effect, and then looking at some other options where we can actually have a little bit more control over where we're pushing and pulling the contrast in our videos. So we're going to drop this clip down to the timeline, and I'll just do Shift and Z so I can see the whole length of that clip on the full timeline. So the first way we can add contrast here is if we come to our effects on the right hand side and we're going to come to the basics option here and here you can see we have this crisp contrast. So I'm going to drag that down to my clip and you can see immediately that bumps the contrast of our clip. So that might be enough for what you need um, but sometimes I find I need a little bit more control over the video. But we're going to have a look up at the inspector first, so just in the video properties and we can see this crisp contrast effect here. So you can see I can slide this to the left to take the contrast off and then I can pull it up and obviously we have keyframing here so we can increase and decrease the contrast of that video. So you can see this is at full and this is all the way down to zero where we have the original image. So the real question you should be asking when you're kind of thinking about pushing and pulling the contrast is what is that actually doing to the image? So we're going to bring up a couple of tools here that we can use in Final Cut Pro to actually view in a bit more detail the changes we're making. So first of all I'm just going to hide the library files across on the left there. Then I'm going to come to my view menu at the top right of my viewer here and we're going to show our video scopes. So in here we have a few different tools we can use. So if we're working with color we want to come to this little button here and go to the vector scope where we can see how saturated or desaturated our image is in relation to red, magenta, blue, cyan, green and yellow. And then for the contrast really we'd be looking at the histogram or the waveform. Now if you're used to using Photoshop then the histogram will probably make the most sense to you. So if we come to the histogram here you can see we have a graph of all of our colors from the darker areas of the image here at zero to 100% or over 100% for our image on the right hand side here. So essentially these would be the shadows in our image. So there's darker parts of the image and the color detail in there and these areas of the light part of the image would be things like the clouds and the lighter parts of the image, like the number plate, the white car and stuff like that. So we're looking at the different part of the image when we're reading this from left to right. The other tool we can use as well is the waveform. But we're going to stick with the histogram in this example. It's just a little bit easier to read when we're kind of looking at these basic tools. So we'll come back to histogram and you can see what happens when I change the amount of my contrast here. So as I drag this to the left, eventually I'm moving my image to having less contrast. So there's no actual blacks in that image and no whites. Basically we remove those very dark and very light areas of the image and you can see as I increase my contrast we're adding more darker areas of the image. So you should see eventually when we slide this up somewhere around 50% um, all this area of the image above 100 will actually clip as will the areas of the image below 0%. So we're losing detail in that image as we're moving parts of the video to the left of the zero here or to the right of the 100%. So basically we're adding contrast and as a result of that part of that is that the, the clouds here for instance are all blown out where you can see as we slide this to the left we get more detail back in those clouds once they come to the left of this 100% but obviously depending on what you want you might want a very high contrast image. So let's have a look at a few different options here. So I'm just going to do shift and z again and I'm going to make a few different layers of this video. So I'm going to make one more layer here and for this layer, I'm going to delete the crisp contrast. So up in my inspector, I can just click on my effect, press delete, and it will remove it. And now I'm going to come down here to my color presets. And you can see in here, we have a contrast option. Now what this will do is again, it will add a contrast. So you can see before I add it, the original image doesn't have any of those areas of the image that are close to zero or zero or close to 100 or 100. We're kind of in a dark gray to light gray area here within the image. So when we drag our contrast on, you can see it pushes parts of that image to the right of 100% and to the left of 0%. So basically we've moved parts of those image into the sort of blown out range of that image. And the way this has done this this time is with a color board. So the color board gives us a little bit more control over where we center the contrast around. So you can see I've got four controls here. I've got a global control which really doesn't control the contrast as much as it controls where the information is. I'm going to leave that around zero. You can see the numbers changing down here. And you can see this color preset has basically dropped the shadows by 33%. So if I 
drop those down even more, you can see even more of that image going to those shadow areas. So you can see I'm controlling this in a different way to the basic slider of the crisp contrast controller, which just has a slider from zero to 100%. We can actually start to control different parts of this image. We can also importantly as well control the midpoint. So I can decide whether I want my image to be overall kind of darker in the shadow. So you can see if I pull this all the way down, we lose a lot of the detail in those midpoints of the image to the blacks. And if we lift this up, then we'll start to actually have a much lighter image overall. So that's the midpoint there. And you can see these little mountains of the graph kind of moving left and right as we drag this up and down. And then the same with the, the white part of the image. At the moment, this is pushed right up. If we push this even more, then we're gonna get a much more blown out image. So almost like a silhouette style image in parts of that image. So we can control that quite nicely. So you can see, when I'm looking at these different effects, if I uncheck this little blue box, I can see what was before, where the image was muted, and what I have now. So this is my kind of contrast image, and you can see the difference in the graph there. And as you work more in Final Cut Pro or Photoshop and see how this histogram works, you can get much more control over your image. So one other thing here as well is if I select this clip and tap V, you can see the difference between what those two different ways of making contrast in your image are. And obviously we've lost a lot more of that kind of color information in the middle here and pushed a lot more of that information over to the left of zero and the right of 100% in this second layer. So you can see when I tap V to disable this second layer, the image below still has some of that color information in there and we can come to that and modify the amount of contrast there as well. So you can see even though I've pushed that up to 100%, we have nowhere near as much contrast as we have in this particular image. So we've got a different level of control. Let's duplicate this one more time. So I'm gonna hold down the Option key and drag this up. So we've got another layer. And with this one, I'm gonna remove the color board. So we're back to our original image. And in here, I'm gonna to come to my color corrections and I'm gonna add a curves correction. So this works in a similar way to the color board, except we have a different way of controlling our colors. So essentially this is our dark point of the image and we can change where that starts. So you can see I can start to darken parts of that image by moving this slider to the left or right. Or I can lighten parts of the image by moving this slider to the left or right. So you can see here, I'm not really changing the darker areas of the image. They're kind of keeping some of the detail in there, but I'm changing where the whites become blown out. So I'm moving more and more of this lighter information to the right of 100% by moving this to the left. And then I can do the same here. So you can see if I move this to the right and get this very vertical line, then I have this very silhouetted look to my video. We can also make a curve here as well. So if I click in the middle, I can add points to my curve and I can drop down the midpoints or raise up the midpoints. So you can see a similar thing is happening that was happening in the color board where we're moving that midpoint up and down. So again, we can control this. So I can move my control point here. I could drop down my shadows by adding another control point here. And you can see I've still got this kind of nice level of control where I can really see how I'm pushing and pulling my image. So I can even bring some of this detail back into the lighter parts of the image when I'm actually of lightening up some of those mountains and stuff. So you can make some strange effects where the, the shadows don't quite make sense. We push this all the way back up and this one down here, you can see again, we get that image with a lot of contrast, but also um, have some control over where that midpoint sits and what's light and what's dark. If we wanna reset this, we can hit this little hooked arrow or come here and go to reset parameter. We can also find a spot which we want to start working on in our image here. So this little eyedropper will allow us to select a point. You can see it's gonna make a control point here. So now I can push all those points up to white, maybe come across a little bit more, and then push some other points down here. So we end up kind of washing out that sky, losing almost all the blue up there in the sky, and all that has now become white, and we can see that in our histogram across on the left here, where we started to make that image very silhouetted. So really, if we just have a quick look at these three different ways of making contrast, 
you can see you've got that different level of control. So I'm just disabling the top two layers there and then back to our basic crisp contrast here where we can use the slider and then up to our color board where we have the options to change the midpoint, change the whites and change the blacks. So we've got control over those different points. And then also here where if we go into the curves, we've got that nice level of control over where the darker and lighter parts of the image are. Now one last thing to, to finish off with, if we hold down the option key and just drag up one more time, I'm gonna delete from here the color curves option that I have there. And we're gonna add another color board onto here. So we're gonna go straight up here and it will come into our color board as the default. Now if we, rather than dropping down the blacks to make them darker, lift that up to make it lighter, and lift the whites down to make them darker, then we can actually kind of neutralize this image. And I use this quite a lot if I ever want to overlay text over the top of my image. So you can see rather than pushing my color to the left and right of that zero and 100%, it's pushing it all to this gray point in the middle. And we can change exactly how dark or how light we want that image to be and within that gray kind of area. So you can see, I've got everything below 50%, which means, for instance, that if we come back up to our type and generators at the top left, so I've just clicked this little box of six squares to bring that back up. We'll come to our basic type here, so our bumper and opener. I add a basic title down here. And you can see now, I'm gonna hide these video scopes. When I have some text in there, we'll make this nice and bold, we'll increase the size of it. You can see that that text has contrast with the background. So if we come to the layer below, and actually I'll hide my library and bring back up the video scopes, so the histogram here, you can see all that information, of that white text is over here. So basically that text is white, so it's separated completely in terms of its luminosity from the rest of my video in the background there. So it's gonna be nice and clear and legible to read as we kind of play back our video. So that's a nice trick for pulling your text out and making it pop out from the background a little bit. If we put the text in front of our other layers, so I'll tap V there, you can see it becomes completely illegible. The whites of that image are fighting with the text and the same for those other layers that we have behind there as well. So you can work with contrast to increase the contrast, but we can also use contrast to lower the contrast as well for things like overlaying text. So I hope this is a useful overview of working with some of the basic ways of adding or reducing contrast to your videos in Final Cut Pro. If you have any questions about this or other techniques, then do leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.